Traditionally, the four-cylinder 912 has played second fiddle to the six-cylinder 911. That doesn't appear to be the case anymore, though. In today's video, we're going to be studying the 912C by Cam Manufacture. Budapest-themed Cam Manufacture is the brainchild of Mickey Kazma. This 912C resto mod built very much in accordance with Mickey's personal taste in cars, that's fast road or track use with added spice. Top level stats are 175 horsepower and just 750 kilos wet weight. The goal here being to mimic the 1967 911R by producing a car that's as light as possible. Carbon fiber helps bring this weight right down of course, the material used to create the front wings, bonnet, bumpers, doors, and deck lid. Even the Talbot mirrors are carbon fiber, weighing just 40 grams with the mirror included. Aside from the windscreen, all glass has been swapped out for polycarbonate too. Mickey says the company could have gone even further with the weight saving, but it was important to retain practicality on a car he hopes customers will readily use in future. In terms of footprints, the lightweight center locking wheels are seven inches all round, much beefier than the original 912 of course, with 195 section tyres on the front and 205 on the rear. Mickey says this is the widest the company could go without reprofiling the 912's customary slender arches. The engine deployed is an original Type 616 used in the 356 and then the 912. Completely rebuilt here from scratch, including the crank, the heads, pistons and cylinders were completed by JPS Aircooled, who Mickey says used to work on these classic engines at Porsche in a race capacity. In terms of the engine's aesthetics, Cam has sought to mimic the look of the iconic Porsche 4 Cam 4-cylinder Carrera engine. Parts of it have been remastered in carbon fibre instead of sheet metal, with even the fan blades, shroud and scoop made from CFRP. Another key difference here is the use of a modern alternator to accommodate, among other things, modern electric air conditioning. The big question is, why stick with a four-cylinder engine rather than employ the more potent flat six? Well, Mickey points to weight. The 912's engine is around 80 kilos less than the comparative six-cylinder engine, so for a motorsports thinking, putting more weight over the rear axle rather than past it points to better handling. The four-pot engine doesn't really mean a power deficit, in this trim, it produces 175 horsepower, but Mickey says it can be tuned up to 204 horsepower. Let's grab a chat with Mickey about some details on the car's interior. Mickey, inside the 912C. So, yes, yeah, look, talk us through in here. First of all, what we try to do is create a um, removable trim. So what you see is all removable. I mean, even the rear seat pack is a different idea it's just a foam brake designed and covered in Porsche leather with the basket weave design but you can velcro it off. I was very particular about the seats um, I really wanted to have something narrow because this is a really small car mm -hmm. and nowadays if you look at the Recaro seats, the racing seats, the bucket seats they're all huge kind of looks like a low back seat but yeah. still it, it's all the way up to your shoulders so inside the door it is the design of the 911R. The window is a little bit different. It's also the same mechanism, so you can just pull it down with the ladder strap, but in the 911, it, there was a screw over here at bolt where you can just like uh, put it over there. Here, you untwist this little knob. Oh, yeah, look at that. And okay, you can nice. tighten it and untighten it with yeah. the knob. You guys have, have got air conditioning in here. Right. It's an electric unit from Classic Retrofit. That's correct. Stationed in the front. Again, a good place to put it little bit of extra weight in the middle exactly. there. Okay. So what we try to achieve that all the auxiliary things that we needed, we're trying to keep it to the front. Can we talk about the gearbox? The original shifter is, is all the way down mm -hmm. in the middle, um, almost uh, under the dash, and it yeah. has this hockey stick kind of shape with a very, very, very long throw, you know, like a thick soup. You're trying to find the mm -hmm. gears. Absolutely not like a motorsports car would feel like driving, right? So we, we were playing first, trying to short shift it and trying to use the original position you know, making a longer stick but honestly it just didn't work so we we thought that we should 
position it, the stick where it should be, where the handbrake is. So we have our handbrake a little bit further to the back. It's not parking, but rather for the fun. So back to the shifter. This whole mechanism that we created, it was be purposely built because we realized that, that the throw to the front and the back and, and to the right to the left should be different. It needs a bit of a force, obviously. It's, it's a little bit bra but now you can actually feel what you're doing. It's five speed, which was optional on the original 912. Yes. Um, dog leg first gear, is, is it a 901 gearbox? It's a 901 gearbox, but for a later model. Okay. It's, from, it's coming from a long, uh, long wheel base. Yeah. I really like the 901 because it's light. Yeah, 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 well it feeds in with everything else on yeah. this car. Pedal setup, obviously there's a new pedal box in there. When we were already touching so many parts of the car, I thought that um, it wouldn't hurt to make it hydraulic. So we converted the 901 uh, gearbox in the clutch, which is actually a racing clutch uh, portion, racing clutch on it, aluminum light. Um, and that's why we've chosen the, the Tilton pedal boxes, so we can hydraulic. And I also wanted to have a two-circuit um, braking system so we can adjust the front and rear, not just with just a knob, but also actually with the balance bar. Oh, okay, yeah. So awesome. you can see two separate lines are going. Yeah, yeah. One is going front, the other one is going to the back. And, and steering as well. The steering. Steering, well, yes. Helps a lot more direct. Well, it, it it is way more direct because again, from coming from motorsports, you really don't have time too much for turning. So mm -hmm. you really want to make sure that with one turn you can you can actually make a lot of adjustment on the on the car's movement. We added a, an increased grade ratio in it, so now it's 1.7 turns. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's quite tight. Yeah. <laughs> on street, on bumpy roads, you have to, you know, hold two hands firmly on on, mm -hmm. on the steering wheel. But on the race tracks, it comes ha really handy. Yeah, yeah. It makes it so easy to turn quickly. Yeah. Suspension. Suspension. Suspension is um, all around um, adjustable dampers and front coilovers. In the rear, the lower arms are adjustable. Uh, sway bars, adjustable, okay. rear and front. Um, yeah, but we kept the torsion bars for this car, for the moment, because the torsion tube itself is also structurally uh, important for the chassis. Mm -hmm. The next car, if we're going with a um, reinforced tube frame or a roll cage, uh, we can we can actually remove the, the um, torsion bar tube so we can move the engine a little bit closer front <laughs> and also use coilovers. Excellent, okay, brilliant. I mean, Mickey, like the, the concept of this I think is brilliant. The reality of what you guys are, are doing here with this is a prototype, believe it or not, um, it is fantastic. So let's, let's take it out for a drive and, and see how we go on. I think before we turn a wheel in this 912C, it's worth mentioning that the march of technology is absolutely fascinating, particularly when you think that this car modelled on the 1967 911R, the lightest 911 ever, weighing in at 800 kilos on the nose, absolutely lightweight and 210 horsepower. You have to consider that fast forward to modern day, over 50 years later, I'm sitting in a car that weighs less than that, 750-ish kilos, as we said earlier in the video, and in race tune, it's 204 horsepower is not far off the 911R's 210 horsepower engine. That was six cylinder. This is a four pot. So again, the march of time, it just goes to show the wonders of technology and, and what's possible. So we, the numbers are amazing or certainly seem amazing. The concept is brilliant. I think the only thing left to see now is, well, is the reality as good as the concept and those numbers suggest. So it's a 901 gearbox, as we've mentioned, which means a dog leg first gear, five speed, of course, with shorter ratios. Gonna have to rearrange the brain a bit, I think, just to comprehend how that might work. The noise! Well, this is mightily different to any 912 I've driven before, or any 911. I mean, clearly, this is a, an aggressive car to drive. The ratios are very short. The suspension is tuned for the track, really, and roads in this country are terrible. So 
it is a bit bumpy, but again, that's all something that can be changed, so it's not something to dwell on too much at all. The steering is so direct. As Mickey said, 1.7 turns lock to lock. So it's very, very, very punchy at the nose. The brakes, granted, they don't have that kind of clinical feel to them like of modern systems. <laughs> so, it's brilliant. So yes, it, it doesn't, the brakes don't have that clinical feel of modern systems, of course, which I quite like. It has plenty of that character from old. You have to still really stamp on the pedal, but I mean, the feel through the pedal, not just in braking, but also in regards to the accelerator, is wonderful. It's amazing because this car really has taken everything that's good about the 912 in terms of that really nice natural balance, that lovely four-cylinder engine, just turned everything up to 12, but then also with the help of modern technology, just instilled some of those things that we love perhaps about contemporary 911s. For sure, this 912C, C standing for carbon, is one outrageous machine, requiring a complete recalibration of the mind as to what a 912 is and can be. Inherently better balanced than a 911, it is nevertheless a very aggressive car that requires a lot of commitment. The firm ride, busy steering and shorter gear ratios all contribute to positively high drama if you intend to push on. Without a doubt, 175 horsepower in a classic car never felt so fast. The power delivery is incredibly linear with a strong mid-range and a punchy top end, far removed from the normal 912, sometimes breathless flat four. It's a car that loves to be revved and loves to be driven by the scruff of the neck at nine tenths or more, just as a proper Porsche should. What's more, you can feel how light this car is, not only in the way it accelerates, but in the deafness of its directional changes. The 912's nose is very pointy, but the rear can be twitchy, so your inputs must be considered. Get it right though, and you're hitting something like automotive Nirvana. That said, in reality, this setup is possibly a little too harsh for me, but this is Mickey's ideal. And he's keen to stress that the 912 can be set up to the customer's spec, should your desires lean more towards road trip than all out race car. To call this a 912 on steroids wouldn't do the car justice. This full-on flat engine fire breather can be likened to a modern day usable 911R, such as its potency and commitment to adding lightness. A genuine 67R will set you back at least two and a half million euros currently, while this can remastering costs 325K. With this sort of setup, it seems the 912 need not live in the shadow of the 911 anymore.